Welcome back to Jump Scare. I'm Betty. And I'm Shad. And this week, we have actually an event occurring this weekend. Oh, that's right. Which is the Constant Reader Ball celebrating the works of Stephen King, the universes he has created. A new novel he actually has coming out on September 10th called The Institute. Yep. And it, Chapter 2, which comes out, to, well, I wouldn't say tomorrow, uh, Thursday. Yep. Uh, we watched Needful Things. First, there was Stand By Me. Then came Misery. And now, Castle Rock Entertainment and Stephen King are at it again. The devil is in Castle Rock. I know a great deal about the past. He's a good man. He's a con man, Polly, or something worse. Who are you? There have been two murders and an attempted suicide in this quiet little town in the last 48 hours, and Mr. Leland Gone is at the bottom of it. Ah! He's not a human being. No! Don't you see what he's done? We kill them all. Let God sort them out. Yeah, needful things. We actually viewed the three hour and forty five minutes needful things. Was it no, that it was long? only three hours? It was. Are you sure? I feel like it was actually three hours and forty five years of my life. I can never. Uh, it was a long time, but it was only three hours. Sadly, the film came out in nineteen ninety three. The novel was written in ninety one, so it had been some time, and it's actually the last castle rock novel um novel because you know he's like ah, i'm done writing castle rock stuff and then he's like ah, i don't know many years later he's like ah, i got some short stories in me that you know or adjacent to castle rock maybe they like happen in like the city line maybe one of them happened in castle rock he didn't know they're in the unincorporated part of the city yeah he didn't know he's getting really particular about the about zoning now so I had to look up what the actual, you are a constant reader, yes. uh, which is a fan of Stephen King's works. And I had to look up what the actual timeline of the Castle Rock like world is mm -hmm. in novels. So the first one is Graveyard Shift. Okay. The second one is Nona, which this is very weird. So Graveyard Shift, you got like maniacal like rats and like a rat queen, right? Mm -hmm. Nona, hitchhiker lady, it's actually the narrator's son in the story. He's in jail. He's in prison. And he's in prison because he picked up this like beautiful hitchhiker woman who like convinced him to go like on a murderous rampage. Turns out she's a fucking big ass rat that like ends up laughing at him and he doesn't know if it's real or not, but he already committed all these murders. So now he going to jail. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is that about? He has like an obsession with rats. I don't. Well, you got to remember Stephen King at one point worked in the huge industrial laundry, which is where the stories like Graveyard Shift, The Mangler, your personal favorite came from as it was experienced is also like the the one the sun dog deals with someone that works at a laundry too interesting i know that he you know you write what you know right so he does it really well if anyone's read any of his novels uh there's a lot many of them that actually deal with addictions all kinds of addiction alcohol drugs and he is not a stranger to either one of those things or he was uh, Cujo, Different Seasons, The Dark Half, Needful Things, Gwendy's Button Box. Yeah, that's one of the more recent ones. And Elevation. Yeah, they're both, they're both in the last couple of years. So he is not done with the Castle Rock world, or he wasn't, because he continued writing, even though they're, they're, those the other ones are novellas. They're not full-blown novels. But yeah, so Needful Things, we have, you know, typical 
story of new person comes to town. It's a small town. It's the talk of the town. Everyone is, you know, people are scared because there's a stranger coming into their town. They don't know what to expect. Other people are excited because it, you know, brings life into the town. That's like a boring, you know, everybody, you know, everything that's going to happen kind of thing. A lot of people have a lot of mixed feelings about the arrival of the Needful Things store. And Mr. Straker is opening an antique store. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's Salem's Lot where almost the same thing happens where the strangers come to town and open an antique store. Yeah, so apparently... If you are old slash the devil, a demon, or Satan himself. A vampire. Or vampire. Didn't I say vampire? I did in my mind. But oh, I said demon, so then I just thought okay. immediately vampire. You, vampire, uh, you will be, uh, you will own an antique shop. At some point. You have lived a whole, like a long ass fuck time. At some point, all the shit just laying around your house became antiques, and you just brought all the shit that you were trawling around with you and said, this will be my cover. It's an antique place. Oh, look at this. You've got Taco Bell glasses from the 90s. <laughs> Imagine. Be the, that'll be the vampire in 50 years. Wow. <laughs> if that tells a vampire right now, I'm like, ooh, I need those uh, special edition, like, Tinker Bell like they had like a whole line of like each character had their own glass. It was like a Tinkerbell one. Oh yeah, I've got the Star Trek line of glasses and the Star Wars ones, I believe. Nerd. So, <laughs> yes, I know. I look at them in the cabinet when I open the cabinet. It's the cabinet of of we're not going to drink from any of these fucking glasses. It's just a cabinet full of glasses that no one drinks from. That that's the cabinet where those oh, are. Oh, but that's not even those. Wow. These are in another box. I don't think you've even seen them. I haven't even seen them. No, There's like these a are whole... in a whole other crate. So you can sell them to one of the like vampire, you know, Satan guy that comes into town. I'm going to sell those. All right. We'll see what we can get for them. Yeah. A favor. Just, just don't trade your soul. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to, he's going to put my name in the book. You know, that he smells and like kisses. He's, there's a very intimate scene with... Uh, what's his name? Von Blecka? Max Von Sydow. Max Von Sydow playing, that's his actual real name. Playing Leland Gaunt. Yeah, that's the actor's real name. That wasn't the name of the fucking character. That's. <laughs> yeah, Von Sydow. Is that, that's just a great name. Von Sydow. Yes, he's like, hello, welcome to my store. You need shit. It's very needful. That's why they call it needful things. Yeah, that's exactly why. So, yeah, he w- strolls into town. Um, don't really, don't really know, you know, what he is and, you know, in the end you, he's done some, he hasn't actually done anything. This is, this is the beauty of like the devil. He's like me. What? I didn't do anything. I just was around and it's the people that did the shit. I'm not responsible. I'm just standing here in the fucking sidelines. Like, Ooh, look what they did. Cause yep. he never takes responsibility for anything. He's like, ah, you know. I didn't force him to throw that rock through the window. I didn't force her to go up the stairs with a knife. Like, and technically he didn't. They have their thing of free will. Like, yeah. but they, you know, the humans always disappoint. They always do crazy bullshit. So he's strolling into town. You got Ed Harris, who's playing uh, Pangborn. Who's Sheriff been played by a few different actors over the years because he's been in a lot of the Stephen King novels. And we actually just saw him, if you had listened to or watched Castle Rock on Hulu, uh, he was, you know, definitely in there. And we did discuss that at the time, the ties in to, you know, the actual Stephen King novels when we broke down Castle Rock. Um, But enough of Castle Rock said to me. And as a reader, so this, not the novel is similar the same like i'm sorry that's the same the same or different from it's a lot of it's the same it's just that the novel goes into a lot more detail with all the characters you really spend a lot of time in all their heads you find out more about like they show a little bit of the flashbacks of different characters backstory in the movie but in the books you really get the, it's a typical stephen king you get everything fleshed out you know their whole life story by the time that it's over and in you know now they left this out of the movie, but in the book, they the, left this out of the three-hour fucking movie. Yeah, well, it was only. We'll get to that. Uh, in the book, 
one of the characters that Leland Gaunt gets a favor from is Ace Merrill, who was the bully in Stand By Me that caused all the problems. He was played by Kiefer Sutherland in the movie. And I'm sure they didn't want to, you know, write that back in at the time because they didn't want people to be like, well, where's Kiefer Sutherland and all that. So, but again, that's more of his things of just like shared universes and all that. Uh, but yeah, the the book and the movie are, it stays pretty true to the book. It just condenses a lot of it down. And of course, in the book, the there are characters who die that make it in the movie. And the movie kind of cut down some of the mayhem and bloodshed at the end. Because when things go to hell at the end of the book, they really go bad. Like the whole town's burning down. Most of it's gone. Uh, like the state police are in, like the National Guard, like control it. Like it's it, everything went to hell. Holy shit! And this yeah. is a town of maybe like four hundred people. I would say it's a small town. You're like, no, there's two thousand. There's yeah, five it's people. probably around two to five thousand people in Castle Rock. There's actually five people in Castle Rock. One lives in the mountain. One lives in the forest. The other one lives by a fucking lake. The other one lives. And the the other one lives in the lake, and the other one lives in a creepy ass old house on top of a mountain inside the forest by the lake. Okay, <laughs> not sure where that came from, but that just surmised the Castle Rock living situation of where you would think the people would be living by. And but when you watch the movie, that's exactly where they're living. Well, you have the turkey farm. You always got to have a turkey farm somewhere. Oh, yeah, the turkey farm. Yes. How could I forget about the turkey farm? The film, the three-hour film, it's not, obviously, the movie is not three hours. This is the version that, just like, you know, back in the day, they would ask these directors, hey, you know, we need this to fit the time slot for TV. Can you, like, you know, lengthen it, just like they did for Halloween 2? Well, and two, this was after there had been a lot of success with, like, Stephen King miniseries. They had had, like, The Stand that was, like, a four-part one that was real successful. It had been successful. Then there was, like, Storm of the Century, Langoliers. All these had been... Even uh, if they the weren't, Langoliers was not successful. Yeah, even if they weren't as successful, they were known. They were something to watch. Even though Balky was in it, he couldn't save that movie. That movie's motherfucking terrible. It's actually my hated movie of Stephen King. That and Rose Red. You know, uh, Bronson Pinchot narrates the audiobook for that too. Oh my god. Which is odd because it was out like years before the the audiobook actually was out years before the movie so they really kept him in mind for that. Yeah, they're like, um, you're the guy. You're the guy. <laughs> Tearing paper. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, so they just wanted to have like be able to have another mini series to put on back in the days of Superstation TBS. Yes, which Monday, don't forget Monday at 8, uh, murdered 1600. 1600 yeah, well, they kept throwing that through the entire copy of this that we watched. <laughs> yeah, so I have to, you know, put my time clock on, also known as an alarm clock. And <laughs> I have to I say, are you punching, in? You, you punching in at home? I sure am. It's graveyard shift, baby. Gotta get them rats in the basement. R- weird. It's just weird. There are no rats in this film. Thank goodness. There's some turkeys. There's some weird curio items. There's uh, garbage. Um, there's a lot of scenes of, you know, the sheriff getting out of his car. I feel like there was a lot of scenes of him entering and exiting the car. But that's he's a man on the go. He has... You know, it's a town of five thousand people, supposedly. Well, so. I didn't really understand with this one in the t- in the uh, extended version of it, where it starts off with like the the uh, car that Gaunt drives comes in, smashes into the sheriff's car, and they have a car chase around town. The car explodes and all this. I didn't really understand how that was supposed to really. That's why they do not show it in the actual film that was released theatrically. Yeah, at least because not that it was I remember. Pointless. I don't see that because later on you see the car, so it's just like oh. Okay, at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, you see a car at the end of a movie. So I just spoiled the whole fucking movie for you. I think this would work a lot better if it was broken down into, like, this would be a good one to do as, like, a mini-series that was, like, six or seven parts. And at the end of, you know, in each part, you kind of focus on a certain group of characters and the things that he asked them to do. That way, every, like, episode, you're reaching, like, a point of, okay, you're going to get where these characters are coming from why they're doing what they're doing and then you you know you kind of end the episode with them oh this is where i'm going to throw the apple through the window and she's going to think it was someone else yeah and 
And then like the last couple of episodes are all like the very end of it where everything's gone to hell. We're not going to call it though Needful Things. We're going to call it Curious Goods. <laughs> yeah, I, you know. I'm just kidding. That had been out for a while. So I wonder if that was planted in his mind. Yeah, if no one knows what the fuck I'm talking about. It's Friday the 13th, the series, which I think that's what they should have named the uh, TV show is the Curious Goods Shop or Curious Goods. It's called Curious Goods. Uh, because aligning it with Friday the 13th, it was just a terrible idea. Well, I don't know. It was pretty successful for the first two years it was on. I mean, yeah, but it a lot of it's name recognition. It's like, wait, is Jason going to come into the shop this time? And like, this is, ooh, he's going to buy his first hockey mask here. You know? Well, what's funny is I watched that documentary about the the uh, Crystal Lake Memories, and they literally said that the first two seasons it was on, it was very successful because it was on Friday night, like at midnight. Yeah. So they decided to move it to Saturdays at like 6 o'clock. So you put the show called Friday the 13th on on Saturday. Yeah, so it, it plummeted. So that was the end of that. I love that TV show, and we will be talking about it. Surprise! Later on in another episode for a special bullshitty thing we're doing in October. So look forward to that. I think we should do a top five. Our first top five should be that. Top five, five to 13. That sounds good. Top five curious goods episodes. And then too, like with the, with this movie, I don't know, like the Max von Sydow playing the guy. Yeah, you know, he's like a famous actor. He's done a lot of things. But I don't think he was particularly good in this oh burn uh that was cold-blooded why i don't know he just played it a little too it was a little too campy he needed to be a little bit more serious a little bit more sinister and it kind of you know he came off more as a jokey devil you need to be a little more serious a little more it's because he was always laughing in front of a fire like yeah touching his hands he did have a lot of scenes of you know holding his own hands in front of the fire that was a little odd yeah he was always looking i i feel like maybe the flames were like a crystal ball where even though the audience doesn't see that he's actually watching like playing out the diabolical things that these people the favors that they're doing for him he can see it happening it's like a tv it's like a tv because he had no tv he, so you he just had a fire in a Moses chair. Directing or maybe he didn't even have that because Russell later on, in one movie. there was so nothing in the whole fucking strange. house. It was just a trash central. Ooh, well, so that, that was a big change from the book to the yeah, extended that is weird. version and then, of the movie. And uh, what's I don't your face? In the original from, one or not? But um, in the how book, to marry the sheriff didn't visit the shop. Oh, Amanda Plummer. Amanda Plummer. And when he finally visited the shop, it was which when you look at her, well, I would say that. That's, that's I'm gonna back you up in saying that it's the other one not here that's kind her, of uh, like because there is a, a small specific part line it, is it, uh, that's Monroe, said by one of plays, the characters uh, where he says not to go into the shop, uh, but at this point he already had gone into the shop, and we're like an hour. Betty's plus into dad, the movie. yes, yeah. I remember. So it was one of those like, things oh God, oh where God, oh God, the kind of bad. Yeah, he, and well, we only because it, the they things that happened, yeah, it's just yeah, I've seen just so many things. I mean, he happened, was in so charmed. I'm gonna for, agree with you. I don't yeah, even know totally how many. I want to say a whole season. He was in charmed. He was in Freddy vs. Jason. It wouldn't have made sense. Yeah, he was Freddy vs. He played. Did he play a cop? Yeah, played a cop in that. Directed by Charles. He's played a cop in a few horror movies now. Yeah, he's a cop guy. I guess maybe because he has like the fates, maybe or he has that like cat. He has a cop bod. He has that cop face that's like. There's some people you see they just play like a cop or something and throughout their career. He's just one of those guys. You put him in a uniform, he looks like the uniform guy that would pull you over and give you a ticket. Do you think this is a film that would garnish it being remade? Yeah, I do. Like I said, I think you could remake this into a pretty good little mini series, like for Hulu or Netflix. You just need to, the pacing on it's just off. You just need to be able to have it paced out to where there's kind of a payoff at the end of every episode. Make it a, you know, there's a story arc that goes through the whole thing, but episodically it pays off with a little story each time of, you know, the the kid gets the baseball card and what he has to do is in the first one. And then you pay it off until the end where you see everything go to hell. That gives you more time to develop all the characters and show a little bit of their, more of their backstory. And I, yeah, I think, it, I think it should be remade. Now, I don't know. I mean, it's so wild to think like, who else in like lit history has there been someone that has had their work in 
so many different mediums. Like we have, you got the TV, you got, it's been plays, you have, you know, um, obviously films. I mean, it's just so wild how much has like occurred. Like how many things have been adapted from his work? Yeah, at this point, there's very little of his stuff that hasn't been adapted. It's like everything at this point. I think after the success of like the reboot of it or remake, however you want to call it, that like things were just selling like hotcakes. Like people were just picking shit up and like, we got to make this, we got to make this, we got to make this. Because it's just so, there's so many future projects of Stephen King's works that are being released are being currently worked on to be released on all and all those platforms. Uh, I've never actually seen uh, since we're we're gonna talk a little bit about you know overall Stephen King. If you haven't gotten it, just this is Stephen King week for us. Um, shit, I lost my train of thought. I was thinking about I don't. I feel like I was thinking about Salem's Lot. Oh yeah, I was thinking about Salem's Lot. I've never seen the Roblo version. I anyone have that? I I need it. I need to watch this. I think you can pick it up on Walmart pretty cheap. It's one of those like multi packs. Can you? Because I feel like I have never come across this ever. Is it one of those things that you have to be actively looking for? Because not even by like a random accident. I've been like, oh look, it's the random, you know, version I've been looking for for like X amount of years. It's usually on one of those multi pack things. Like you'll find it with like the remake. They package it a lot with the remake of The Shining. The like the ninety seven version with uh, Steven Weber and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, I think, is the one that's in it. I like that version. Yeah, that's they package it with that. Yeah, the version Stephen King prefers. Yeah, uh, but it is kind of it's a weird version because I vividly I remember the ending, which I'm not gonna give that away, but I do remember the ending. And you know, we have Doctor Sleep coming out. Uh, that's gonna be coming out soon. Um, more shining stuff and then we got another season of castle rock which doesn't have in his involvement but is inspired they're gonna be basing over his stuff supposedly annie wilkes is going to be involved in this one which i'm interested to see how that goes yeah i'm very interested to see how that goes because it's just like are we this what universe i guess is a sub universe where maybe that hasn't happened yet or it did happen or we yeah. don't know what direction. Maybe this is why she moves to Colorado later. Maybe. After going through all this bullshit and Castle Rock, which I feel like after a certain time, it's like the Amityville house. You just want to like move it, redo the windows, you know, so people are not constantly going over to your house, aka to your town. Rename the town, you know, maybe add some more flower beds. Maybe not call it Castle Rock because I feel like it has a really bad... People are dying. So many bad... So much bad shit has happened in there. You know, from what you tell me, like you got the whole Cujo incident and then you have that whole needful things happening where half well, the town is like You also got blown. the dead zone occurred there too. Yeah. The dead zone, not good things did not happen there. Yeah, but I don't the, think good things happen in any of the novels, but it's just like, whoa, we got to move. Yeah, that's like Summer... What was it? Summerdale. Sunnydale, sorry. Sunnydale and Buffy. I oh, think the Hellmouth? Yeah, I think after the 14th or 15th murder in that town, it would have been time to go. Yeah, it's like, uh... You know what probably kept them? Real estate. Probably super low. Like Same thing with like the, the Murder, She Wrote show. Every that She had to be the angel of death because everywhere she went, people were just dropping dead. <laughs> I think that's why they eventually started having her travel because it was like, oh... You lived in the same town and you had 22 episodes. 22 people died in one year in a town of like 500. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. It's just like, if we keep going, there's the only person living is going to be her. Yeah. And that's it. And uh, the typewriter. Yeah. I did, a, <laughs> I did a thing one time a long time ago. It was like the deadliest places on TV. And the, the murder she wrote, that was at Cabot Cove was one. The Sparta, Mississippi from In the Heat of the Night because that show went on for like seven seasons and there was at least one murder in an episode for seven seasons. Wow. So that's a lot of people dying in a town of like several thousand. Well, I have to say that I do not recommend this Needful Things three-hour uh, non-cut 
watch the regular two hours if you need to. I don't, I think it's something you could just totally skip. I don't think it's something you need to watch. It's not going to actually like, it's not going to scare you. It's not a scary one. It technically, I read that he was trying to do like a satire of like the eighties and like consumerism or some bullshit. It, yeah. He didn't really, it, it would like they marketed it as a horror thing because obviously it's Stephen King, but that's not what his main intention was for this, which I totally see that because it, it's not scary. I like the concept. I like, you know, the humans are really the evil, you know, they have the choice whether or not they're going to do these evil things. It's not like he offered anyone, like they were such random small things. Like I'm not going to go and throw like poop on someone's sheets unless you give me like mad cash flow. Like, are you buying me a new iPad? Like what's going on? He, well, I guess for that one, he did give him like a uh, pretty rare baseball card. Yeah. But I guess too, the thing is that it all seems to him like, oh, I'm going to go rub some, some turkey shit on these sheets and yeah, they're going to be mad, but it doesn't stop to think that they're going to actually kill someone over it, you know? Yes. Spoiler alert. They do. It is the knife fight of all knife fights yeah. over... Well, I mean, one thing, though, I mean, I'm not going to say anything, but one very sensitive thing occurred that I did not enjoy in the film, which I, I wouldn't say it was a scary part, but it was really messed up. So, yeah, I probably would have fought if I came home and, like, my beloved animal something bad happened to it, I would definitely go yeah. to someone's house and beat someone up. Now, while we can't really recommend this three-hour version of this, what I can recommend you to watch that is hilarious and entertaining that we watched right after this to kind of get us in a better mood is watch the first season episode of Rick and Morty called Something Ricked This Way Comes, <laughs> where Summer goes to work at the store owned by Mr. Needful who's dressed in an old time suit and top hat. And uh, he was running, literally running the store called Needful Things. And they do a really great uh, send up of not only Needful Things, but Friday the 13th, the series and Ray Bradbury's uh, Something Wicked This Way Comes. It's pretty amazing. If you're a horror fan, this is one of the Rick and Morty episodes. It's a must see. Yeah, it is mad hilarious. And even the things that the devil does, it's just like, that's totally the devil. Like, that's, you, you got it right. Right on the money. Yeah, it's it's a perfect episode. And uh, there's another story going on in it that you can kind of ignore. But I love the whole Mr. Needful story in there because it is perfect send up of all the, it hits all the horror tropes perfectly. Yeah, it does. And and the whole needful thing. Like I liked how they didn't like even try to hide the fact. They could have named the store some other bullshit. They're like the store is called Needful Things. And <laughs> and the shop owner is named Mr. Needful. Yeah, they didn't even try to play with that at all. They're yeah. just like, Nope, this is what it is. Doesn't he look like though like one of those is it a character from a cereal box? Like I'm thinking like the one with the like curls, like the mustache curl. Yeah. Who is that I can't guy? Think of who you're talking about. But he's like evil, and he's he looks just like like the way they drew him reminds me of that character. I want to say it's like a serial or one yeah. of those like. There's things. a few of the Rick and Morty episodes where they really nail the the horror stuff down. The other one is, of course, the one with Scary Terry. Yeah, Scary Terry. But uh, yeah, check out something Ricked this way comes because it is uh, a perfect send up of all those cursed object shows. Well, we really didn't go through like step by step of the film because silence. That's that's all I have. I have just silence. Insert silence here. The end. It's uh, a much better book than it is movie. Yeah, I'm sure the book. I mean, there's gonna be like mad detail, like you know Stephen King style. Uh, the film was okay. It was just way too long. It did need to be cut. Like. There was no reason for it to have been made, like for them to have made it any longer because it just was just filling. Like you can notice the stuff that isn't placed correctly or just doesn't flow with the movie. Yeah. And that really sticks out like a sore thumb compared to uh, the two hour version, which even that, I mean, I hadn't seen the movie in a really long time. I actually initially saw it as, I thought it was a miniseries. 
because that's the way I saw it. When it got to TV is how I saw it. And I must have watched the long version because I don't remember watching. It's been such a long time. I've seen it several times. But it's been like, you know... Years. Years in between of me watching. It wasn't like every year I sat down and like watched it. Uh, but it's it's not number one in the worst of the adaptations for me. Definitely The Langoliers takes number one. <laughs> I mean, it's just... It's a film where it just needs... I mean, I hate to say this, but that's something that should be redone only for the CGI aspect of it. Yeah, it's terrible, terrible CGI in that. Yeah, it's like the beginnings. It's like season one of like Doctor Who. What I mean season one, I mean the Russell Davies. Don't lose your mind, Doctor Who fans. Uh, season one, like Doctor Who, Russell Davies, like CGI. It's really bad. Re- I mean, really bad. Uh, it just messes up the whole. I did the story is like whatever to begin with, but that didn't add anything to it. So I do not recommend either film. Well, I don't recommend either film. Okay. So it's not a needful thing for me. It's it's a wasted life thing. You can pass that one out. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for joining us in another episode of Jump Scare. And we hope to see you this weekend at the Constant Reader Ball. Yeah, so stay tuned to the horror. Have you acquired creepy specific old stuff from a mysterious antique or thrift store that gives you powers but f- with you in unforeseeable ways? Bring it to Curse Purge Plus. I, I-, I use science to uncurse the items for cash. 